And so on pulley, we're about to do pulley differently than we did in the fall, but it's been a while since we've done pulleys. So we're quickly gonna review pulleys from the fall, which were massless and frictionless. And so the top portion, we're gonna do old school pulleys. And by the way, College Board can ask you both ways. Now, true story, one of the free response last year, part A, massless frictionless pulley, fall method. And then part C or something, D, it was now the pulley has mass and friction and you had to do rotation. And so there are differences. Both of them begin with a force diagram. And so it says here, simple Atwood's machine, we have a pulley, which is a point of direction change. And we've got two masses hanging on the end. So M1 is greater than M2. And so force diagram, M1, I'm gonna draw a big force, FG1, or I'm just gonna go straight for M1G, same thing. M2 is smaller and I'm gonna go small. I want to make sure that it's very different. There's other forces acting on these two blocks. What is the other force? Tension. On M1 on the left, tension is gonna pull. What direction? On M1? It's gonna pull up. Is How big do we draw it? If these are different masses, are they gonna stay in equilibrium? No. What direction is this system gonna go? Down on the left is forward. What's M2 gonna do? It's gonna go up forward, okay? Now we won't talk about the pulley just yet, but if you were to kind of connect those two directions, Maybe you can you know, predict the rotation, but this is all one fluid movement of the system. And so that tension force on M1 is gonna be smaller than the weight of M1, okay? Because if they were equal, we wouldn't be accelerating. And so I'm gonna draw it maybe like so. And so FT is what I like. Okay, capital T is also a given for tension. And what about the tension on M2? How big do we draw it? Bigger than, bigger than the weight, that's a true statement. And on, if this you may not remember, but the two tensions, since it's a massless friction, frictionless pulley, these two tensions are gonna be equal. And so as the rope slides over that disc, there's no frictional losses, there's no rotation. And so the tension just stays the same all throughout the rope. Okay, then to solve for the acceleration of the system, we need some F net statements, okay? And so F net one equals M1A, don't forget Newton's second law, this is linear motion for the two objects. And I like to put my positive forces first. So M1G minus tension. Y minus tension's pulling back. Yes, it's up, but it's the backward motion now. F net two, I'm gonna stack and have M2A equals my positive force tension minus the back force weight of block two. Y'all remember doing this? And then if we take a look at a system, we kind of stack and add, we get an F net for the system. We get, now hold up a second. Miss Earhart, you forgot your subscripts on the accelerations. It should be A1 and A2, should it? It's the same, they're moving together. They're, they start from rest together. They travel the same distance together. They're gonna to have the same acceleration together. And so if they have that same acceleration, I can factor out the masses or sum the masses times the acceleration. What happens on the right-hand side? 
FT, Newton's third law says that those two forces were equal and opposite. Again, left side, right side, no change. And so FT goes away and all we're left with is M1G minus M2G. Now I can factor out G, that's fine, okay? But to solve for acceleration, we would get the difference in the weights divided by our system mass, M1 plus M2, okay? So this is when we ignore the pulley. Everyone good with that old review? And so I don't know, I think I said it, but in the fall, so when you ignore the pulley, two things. You're basically saying it's massless and frictionless. Now we're gonna change things. Now what if when that rope goes over that pulley disc, it has mass, it has inertia, it has radius and shape. I could change the shape of what it's connected to, right? So that's coming. But now whenever we don't ignore the pulley, that rope that's going over the disc, watch you watch, it's gonna grip the disc friction and it's gonna rotate. I grip and then it rotates. So it's not gonna have linear force necessarily or linear motion it's going to have angular motion yes as long as it's on a fixed point and so that still starts with a force diagram so i'm going to repeat the force diagram for each of the masses and so we're not going to put numbers in it's, we'll just keep it in variable form and so m1g big m2g small what about the tension? Oh, wait, there's another mass. The pulley has mass. The, where am I gonna draw the pulley's gravitational force? From the center of mass, which it kind of looks like is the axis of rotation. Yeah, it's nice when they overlap. And so the, the MG, capital MG of the pulley is straight down. Well, what about the tensions, T1 and T2? Notice one of the questions on the left says, are these two equal or how do they compare? And so I'm gonna say not the same. In fact, I think I told you earlier that the one on the left, T1, is gonna be bigger than T2. Why? Well, T1 on the left, it's on the driving side, basically. It's not only lifting M2, but it's responsible for turning the pulley. So it takes more force to move two things than one. Yes? Okay, so I'm not gonna draw them equal in magnitude. Keep your components, keep your subscripts. Now, how does T1 affect mass one? It's gonna pull up. It's gonna be smaller than M1G. And so I'm gonna come in here, maybe right there, and that's my T1. T2 is going to be smaller than T1, but it's still going to be pulling up on M2. Oopsies. And so I'm doing my best for magnitude, but T2 is smaller than T1, just note. Okay. What about the pulley? Take a closer look. What other forces are acting on the pulley? It doesn't say it, but hopefully this disc is supported by some kind of literal axis of rotation, like a spindle of some kind. So the whole system doesn't just crash down, right? We don't want it all in free fall. And so we'll probably have this normal force, because here's our axis of rotation, a normal force, support force. And then I mentioned the string gripping the pulley disc to rotate. Now, technically that happens at every point of contact, right? They don't want you to draw a hundred different vectors. So I'm gonna change colors. Here's what's new. 
Look at the last point of contact between the string and the disc, okay? And so yes, it's gripping, but it's still a force within the string. So there's a tension force pulling what direction on the pulley? The string is pulling down. Now, care, I know they're different color, but these two tensions are the same. So Newton's third law still works, but it's not left side equals right side. It's left side equals left side. T1 equals T1, but on two different objects. Good deal. And then the string, like I said, grips and pulls. It still has tension all the way across the top. But now go to where the string has the first moment, maybe, of contact. Okay, that tangent point, basically. What direction is T2 pulling on the disc? It's pulling down. How much? Well, not as much as T1. And so T2, let's see, what color, what color? I'll stick with blue, but I'm gonna do two lines. So again, we have Newton's third law, but it's a separate action reaction pair. So diagramming the pulley is the new part. Okay, anything else touching the pulley? We've got the string at the two locations. We've got gravity, of course, and then we've got the support force from the spindle or the center point, whatever's the rod that's going through the center. Nothing else is touching, so that's it. And it says, write the equations for Newton's second law. So this is similar to what we did earlier. M1 and M2 are gonna feel very much the same. And so for M1, F net one, F net one equals M1 A. M1 is not rotating, linear motion equals M1 G minus T1. End. M2, same as before, linear motion F net, it equals M2 A. And this time the positive force is that T2 minus the weight of the two. Now at this point, tension does not cancel. So I can't just do what I did before. There's one more piece, the pulley. Well, I hope the pulley doesn't have linear motion. And so instead of writing a net force statement, we need to write a net torque statement. I alpha. It's gonna have some the torques, which I have not identified. So we'll go do that now. So when we look at the pulley, gravitational force, goes through the fulcrum, no torque, right? Normal force goes through the fulcrum, no torque. The only two forces providing torque are the two tensions. They're both pulling downward, but look at the sides. Down on the left means counterclockwise for T1 and T2 would wrap around clockwise. So here I'm gonna go with standard sign convention. So counterclockwise, I'm gonna say, oops, counterclockwise is positive because doesn't that agree with down on the left being positive and up on the right being positive? Again, they have to agree. I can't have opposition and direction. It all has to work together. And so the torque, in the positive direction is gonna be T1. What would be the lever arm for that first tension on the left? R, right? And so from the fulcrum to the line of force, vertical force, horizontal lever arm, it's gonna equal the radius of the pulley. Isn't that so nice? And so T1R minus T2R. Everybody good? But wait, there's more. Right now, tensions still don't cancel. I've got torques and forces, and those are not the same. 
And so let's spend some more time with that torque equation. What's our non-slip equation again? Well, in terms of alpha and linear acceleration, notice A, A, alpha. If I'm gonna put these together, they all need to be in the same terms. And so using linear acceleration equals alpha R. What if we solve it for alpha and then plug that in right there? And so at this point, I'm gonna to have to slide down any more space, okay? There's a few steps to this one. And so bringing that down, I would have I times A over R equals T1R minus T2R. Still nothing cancels. But what can we plug in for I? And so the I of, we'll say it's a disc, and we'll keep it nice. We'll do the one half MR squared. And that's the mass of the pulley disc. So I'm gonna make that the capital M. So what if we plug that in? And so one half capital MR squared times A over R, pause. What do we see happen? One set of R's cancels all on the left side. Equals T1R minus T2R. Pause. What do we notice happens? The rest of the R's cancel. Divide the whole thing by another R and we get R, 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 no. Okay. You know, a seal, right? Or sea line, I don't know, one of them. Okay, so now where are we? I'm gonna clean this one up with whatever is left and then I'm gonna rewrite our force ones below it and we'll put them all together. And so I get one half capital M massive pulley times a linear acceleration. Not that it has linear motion, we're talking about the point on the edge of the pulley, equals T1 minus T2. And then, like I said, I'm gonna bring down those others identically. And so we had M1A equals M1G minus T1, M2A was T2 minus M2G. So here's where conclusions get drawn. Put them all together. What do we get for the system? Now, I don't wanna say it's a system net force or a system net torque, but it's just the system equation for all the connecting motion. Well, they're all gonna have the same a, a linear acceleration, even that point on the edge of the pulley. And so I have half of the mass of the pulley plus M1 and M2, all times a system acceleration. What happens now on the right-hand side? Tensions now cancel. And so T1 cancels T1, Newton's third law. T2 cancels T2, Newton's third law. What remains? The difference in the weights. And here's where the aha moment happens. So with the pulley, we get an acceleration difference of the weights divided by system mass still, but is it M1, M2? No, you gotta take into account the pulley. Is it just as simple as adding the mass of the pulley? No, don't forget that that little one half, I regret now that I didn't keep it in terms of K, that's your shape constant. We assumed it was a disc because that's pretty standard. But what if tomorrow it's a pulley with a sphere? You'll just get a different fraction. If it's a hoop, you'll just get a different fraction, right? And so that's the big change when you don't ignore the pulley. You have rotation and you have to take the mass and shape constant into account. Tensions still cancel, just not as quickly. Good? All right. Oops, not yet, not yet. Cancel. Uh, next class on page 14, okay?
We'll take a look at what if there's just one mass? What if it's like a yo-yo? Okay, that one works a little bit different. I don't have that rod for it to not linear move. And so we'll look at that rotation with linear motion. Okay, that's it for today.